for the single guy that wants something comfortable, studio, one bedroom, what are we talking? Around a hundred to one hundred twenty dollars USD per month. Okay, so um, today on Adventure Freaks, we're going to head over to India. This is an amazing place I've always wanted to visit. And one day I'm going to get there. I'm with my new friend, Chris Dunn. Chris, thanks for doing the podcast. Not a problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so you're, Chris, tell us a little bit of backstory. You're from the States. Let us know where you're from and, and how you landed in India and how, do, how you found you're living in Bangalore, which is a yeah. really booming amazing city i've heard so many great things about it um tell us how you landed there uh my now wife okay <laughs> she, she, she was uh born in india okay um uh, and you know covid happened uh all of the paperwork for everything got backlogged here everywhere so with everything that needed to get done for their passports visas they have to do everything in person so they were looking at dealing with a year to two years to even three years to get their standard visa stuff taken care of. Uh, we weren't actually planning on being here as long as we have. It's been a year and a half so far, I think, maybe a little more. Mm -hmm. And I came on a business visa originally. Okay. And uh, that was the easiest way to get there for a longer period of time during COVID because it was, they still had all the restrictions for the most part when I came gotcha. here, okay. uh, which they lifted since. And that's why the visa requirements and everything have completely changed now compared to when I first got here. I see. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm still here. And once everything gets settled back at home, then we'll be heading back. You're going to head back to the States. Yes. And yes. live there. What, what part of the States are you going to move to? Uh, back home for me, which is, uh, Westchester, Pennsylvania. Okay. So it's outside of the Philadelphia area. Yeah, very, um, very pretty. pretty it's up a really there. nice area. And that's actually where me and my wife first met. So yeah, we'll be nice. back there. And then, you know, wherever life takes us because no one knows at this point. Yeah. Well, your experience there must be pretty special. I mean, I can't imagine I, I would literally love to be you living there for a year and a half and experiencing um, India because I, I I just fell in love with the food. I love meditation. Um, I love that spiritual aspect of India and how many people I've had friends go over there and have had some pretty incredible experiences staying in ashrams over there. It's basically the number one thing that brings people here. Yeah. Um, they they have a d very diverse country in the sense you can see all sorts of things from snow to the coffee fields to you know flowers and everything yeah um but yeah I, it's basically the spirituality and the culture that brings everyone here i think yeah, in yeah. the first place yeah yeah awesome all right well let's dive into it so the, are you still on your business visa no i want a spouse visa now on a spouse visa. Okay. What can you tell us about for, for, for. I, I can tell you about the tourist visa for sure. Yeah. That's for what they recently updated. Tourist. Okay. Yeah. Let us know for the viewers that would like to go spend, uh, you know, some time and how long can you, can you stay in India on a tourist visa and can you live there um, on a tourist visa? Basically that's the answer. So okay. at minimum, you can do 30 days. For $28. And then you have two entries for that. Um, so you just have to get there before the date of uh, expiration on the e-visa. Yeah. And, and I could be wrong, but the double entry means, I think, if I'm going off of what I had with my visa, um, 30 days, you leave the country. And then you can come back for another 30. Okay. So you got to step out for a full 30 days. You have to step out for, I think, 15. That's what it was. Okay. Might not have even been that. I think you just have to step out. 
like actually take a trip outside the country. Yes. It can't be, I don't think it can be a day trip, but a long weekend. Yeah. I think that's what uh, okay. I did. Uh, and we spent our anniversary in Dubai because it got me out of uh, India. So my visa got reinstated. Do you have to do that every 30 days? You would only be able to do it twice. Twice. Okay. As in, you, you can get there for the 30 days and then leave. And then I think you'd be able to come back for another 30. But they have another option, which is a year. And that's mm -hmm. at $162. And then you'd have multiple entry. And then they do a five-year one, which is also multiple entry. And that's at $484 but you can't stay continuously for more than 180 days. Okay. Interesting. So half a year. Yeah. So it's like a one year visas. Uh, what do they call that? What visa is that? Do you know? That's just a one year tourist visa. These are all tourist, the tourist. Visas. Tourist yeah. visas. Okay. So they offer a one year for 162 and a five year for 480? 484. 484. Okay, that's fantastic, actually. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah, because you'd be able to be here for like half a year. And then yeah. odds are you're going to take a trip back for holidays. Um, mm -hmm. And then you come back again. It's okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. L everybody that moves there is going to look at rentals. For, yes. the sing for the single guy that wants something comfortable, studio, one bedroom. What are we talking in the city I'm at, which again, there's diverse living in every city. Uh, but here, I would say you don't see too many studios. You do see one bedrooms and everything. I would say probably, I'm still going to, I still want to say around 10,000 comfortably. Okay. Uh, I still think that's an overshot. Which, by the way, uh, yeah, the conversion, that's like a, around a 100 to $120 USD per month. Okay, so 100, 100 to 120 Yeah, I'd say. For the rent. For the rent. Okay, per rent. For one bedroom. And I think that might be, depending on the place you live, that might be a little on the higher end. So look, what if you have a uh, somebody that wants like the amenities they want to move into like a one bedroom that has like maybe a deck and a pool and there's a pool on location now, now the interesting yeah. thing is most places here do have a patio okay or a deck we call it yeah. a deck but yeah most almost all of them i think do um which yeah is kind of different for back home because back home you pay extra for that yeah um yeah, yeah if you're if it's going to be you know, ritzier, uh, at a good place, a lot offer pools and everything. Uh, but yeah, you're probably looking at like 150 for a rental and going about the rentals and everything is what can be difficult here. Yeah. Um, you have booms at certain times of the year and lulls. Um, they always want to try to get you to rent or buy which obviously isn't an option. It's not saying there aren't plenty of rentals. There are websites online you can look at, but sometimes you actually have to go to the place you like itself, ask mm -hmm. the security guard, are there any rentals open? This is what mm -hmm. I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And here, when they say furnished or semi-furnished, it's basically not furnished. No. <laughs> at all. <laughs> they don't use the term the same way we do. Yeah. At all. Um, but for when we've been here, we actually rent all of our furniture, um, our major appliances, even the TV, because we didn't have a fixed timeline. Yeah. So sure. we kind of just adjusted to everything as we went. Mm -hmm. Um, but that is the great thing. It's very affordable, uh, to rent all of that stuff. And it's easy to find if you want to go about that route, because quite frankly, yet again, some people do prefer to buy the furniture and you can sure. get it second hand or what, what can or what can you rent it for all the furniture and a tv and that for per month roughly let me i think i need to ask my wife that she knows all of the conversions yeah. <laughs> what what everything we're renting per month yeah what are we paying 
close to 70 USD, but this is for three bedrooms, so our beds and everything included. So About 70 USD, but that, this is for a three bedroom. So that's our wow. bedroom, our living room, our TV, our washer, because you will not find a drying machine here. Um, and we just added an AC for the hotter months. So it's maybe all 70 90. per month. Wow. 70 to 90. Okay. And you guys again, have a awesome. you guys have a three bedroom. What what do three bedrooms go for per month around there? Two ten ish converted. Two ten for a three bedroom. Exa yeah, yeah, exactly. So why are asking, why but, are you guys going back to the US? I'd stay there, man. You're in a bit you're in a great city. There's a lot going on. And it's like US is like there are people you know, that can't, can't afford to live here anymore. Everything's so expensive. It doesn't even matter if you head out to the Midwest. I mean, well, yeah, what, what do they have? Like a 2000% increase compared to what I'm paying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's incredible here. It really is incredible here. Um, the climb of real estate and they say it's going to be the next, uh, you know, epidemic in, in the U S where there's so many people that can't afford rents, even in, well, yeah. even in like Kansas city and, in areas of the country like middle America, where you, you know, they were always where we used to consider it desolate. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Notoriously low rents. Now, I mean, you, you go to these areas of the country, even middle America and, and they're outrageous in price and they're pricing people out. Um, it's yeah, just fascinating. So your, your rent cost is two what for the three bedroom? Like, like two ten. Two ten. And then we uh, paid 20 months uh to maintenance which okay. takes care of like anything that could ever go wrong possible with the building what is the maintenance cost twenty dollars twenty dollars a month yep and some can be lower uh ours just happens to be a fixed number does that include so even, you, even when they even when they were raising the uh maintenance fee for this whole area so we're in alpha garden and that's got to be at least 20 or so different uh, apartment buildings. Mm -hmm. And they're all separate, but they have what's the equivalent of an HOA. Mm -hmm. So we had it fixed. And then everyone else who didn't, they had like a small increase in monthly maintenance, but we didn't, our, our specific building was able to eat the cost because of our fixed rate. Mm -hmm. Does those costs, do they include utilities at all? Or is that separate? No, um, it it does include your water. Okay. Um, but the electric, so again, a three bedroom um, is $24 a month. For electric? <laughs> yeah, for electric. Does that include, okay, so electric and then what other utilities would there be? Like maybe Wi-Fi? Would we loop that into utilities? $15 a month. So that's 15 Wi-Fi, electric, and anything else? We don't do water. Um, no, we don't. Okay. All right. I think, yeah, that's that's everything for your actual rent. And uh, because otherwise you're getting into transportation and everything else. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay. And, and as far as like groceries, what are the cost of groceries um, locally there? And when you, when you go out, what do you, what do you guys spend per so month? So back at home, you spend about what? A good two hundred dollars every time you go to the grocery store. Yeah, we spend a lot at the grocery store, and that's what we spend in an entire month. And that's okay. feeding three people. And that's okay. So you spend approximately two hundred a month. Yes, and groceries. again, that's that's like, and that's feeding the family. And that's yeah, that's being almost excessive with what we get from our groceries. But that's the other nice thing: everything's delivered. Like you don't. If you want to be a shut in, you can be a shut in. Like, mm -hmm. It's okay because they just deliver everything here. Everything. Wow. Which was the one thing I liked when uh, I first got here because I was like, wait, I can just order anything I want from anywhere and yeah. it'll be at my door. <laughs> and my wife was like, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> do you ever like it? Are you ever like laying on the couch and like watching something and going, well, can they, can they bring it over to me on the couch so you don't even have to get up? <laughs> I mean, if I'm in the, say I'm in the chair and not on the couch, I literally can open the door and not get up. That, that, that's, a, that's a reality. 
Like it's, <laughs> and it's happened. It's literally happened. We've gotten grocery deliveries and I'm just like, no, just open the door, grab the bag. <laughs> the door. Thanks. You don't even have to stand up, man. It's like, great. No, you don't. If you, it's amazing. And things right. Um, and, and it never gets old, the shock in their face when <laughs> I open the door and they see a white guy. They're like, they're like, What's he doing here? Yeah. He's like, he must be one that. of those because, AI yeah. Google tech guys coming yeah. in. And no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a writer. <laughs> so, Chris, if okay, so if it's 200 for three people, I guess realistically for a person, to do groceries, maybe 50, 60 bucks a month, I would think. I think 50 to 60, and that's doing just fine. Yeah, okay. And then how do you guys get around? How do people move around? Do you use taxis or what form of transportation? We, we use taxis, but there are different forms of it. So again, you have your standard sedan, um, but we've pretty much always taken auto, which is the little tuk-tuk, the little mobile that yep. you always see in yep. movies and everything yeah. um and that's actually one of my favorite ways to go just because i mean they drive so crazy here yeah uh and for whatever reason i feel safer in that than a sedan probably because it's smaller and it's easier to maneuver sure. um it, it takes a huge adjustment though it took me months to get used to the driving here mm -hmm. like a lot of you people from us will have trouble with that yeah <laughs> feeling not in control and and seeing pure <laughs> chaos and yet it always works out and we're like there could be three people on the road back at home and there will still be an accident like we've proven it <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> so when you jump on a tuk-tuk how much does it cost i mean to to uh you know move around town on those so we were doing this math and say you're going to go two miles, which is actually considerably far here, mm -hmm. because these these cities are super condensed. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, I think New York City uh, would be comparable to like, did I say New York or Bangalore is comparable to New York City. New York, okay. Um, but going two miles would be about two dollars here. Okay. And you're not going to get that in New York City. No. I don't even think you could get. A ride on someone's pegs on a bicycle for that no for two blocks but no i mean uh, i remember i lived in new york for for nine years in in new york city and i mean I, the, I remember and i lived in the boroughs so i lived in brooklyn and i didn't and then i lived in queens as well and if you're in manhattan you take a taxi back then i mean you'd pay 50 bucks but now just going from manhattan to to Brooklyn, where you live, it could be close. It could be a hundred bucks that you drop for a taxi. It's like that's why when you, when I was a kid and we would visit because my dad used to work in the city. Uh, that's where we learned to walk because he wasn't paying for the cab. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it was always ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Chris, what do you guys do for um, for healthcare? What do people do for no. healthcare that live there? You don't. Um, there's no requirement. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> um, if you need it, you pay for it. Um, and a full checkup, top to bottom, blood work and everything would be $35 USD. Wow. Which so like a full physical. Yeah. And that's probably what a lot of people pay for a copay just to get in the door. Yeah. Well, I wonder what would happen. You know how astronomical prices are. There, I mean, that's another thing that's about on the verge to break in the United States is the healthcare system and how yeah. many people file bankruptcy because if you stay in the hospital in, in intensive care for a week, you have a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollar bill that Probably a lot of people more. just yeah, people can't cover. So I mean, what happens for people that like maybe have a stroke or a heart attack in India? I mean do you have any idea what something like that? Well, they got a large have? population, so sometimes they just let them go. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it depends on the relationship in the family, to be honest. Um, no, they they do have the medical coverage. They have insurance. Say, okay, say you don't have insurance. You go in for something severe like that. You're still probably paying a couple hundred. Yeah. 
I mean, it depends how long. So three fifty, but how long do you think you'd be in for that? If you have a stroke or something, then it would be with the, all the tests and two nights. So two nights, all the tests. You're talking about three hundred fifty if you have a stroke. Mm -hmm. What if they have to stay in for a couple of weeks? They're in intensive care. They need to be really watched. They could potentially, you know. Any idea? Uh, it's insane because they have insurance coverage, so then they charge a lot. Like that. So apparently it almost doesn't make a difference because kind of like at home, if you do have insurance coverage, because it's all, you know, so companies offer it and everything, um, then they'll actually charge way more mm -hmm. because they get the insurance money. And this is nothing new to any of us. Um, but if it's someone who needs it, what do you think? Say it's a week? It's a week. I would say a thousand. India also has government hospitals which can do it in 300 to 400 USD. A thousand for private, saying it's a week. And government could be three. And if it's a government facility, it could be 300. Because that is the other thing. Because of the population, all of the services that, you know, basically kill us back at home, um, it's competition here. Yeah. So it does, it can drive down prices. Yeah. And especially when you're talking dental work. Like, yeah. Yeah. A well, lot of people that visit, you know, from the US to here because they have family or whatever, they would rather, I mean, it is cheaper to just get it done here. Yeah. I know more and more people that are doing the um, overseas medical, medical care in Mexico and especially dental work because it's so costly here in, in the United States. Yeah. So it's I think uh, the most expensive thing about India is just getting to India. Yeah, exactly. The ticket prices even far out are 15, 1500. Sure. Yeah. USD, I think for a round trip. Yeah. But yeah. But once you that's get months there, out. that's months out. Like if, if you, not that I can really imagine something coming up that was that detrimental to someone who was just planning to visit. Um, yeah, otherwise it can be pretty astronomical and it depends I mean, how many people. And that's the big cost. I mean, but but once you fly, you, yeah. you land, you're in India. I mean, what do hostels go for? What do nice hostels or, or hotels go for? I mean, you could probably get them fairly cheap, I would think. Yes. So hotels wide range um god yeah i can think of like there's one brand called ginger not like what we call them back at home uh that's the name of the hotel what what's that ginger is taco and i think it's around 22 bucks yeah it's like 20 20 dollars yeah so like 20 20 dollars and that's a three-star hotel but yeah if you go to a five-star you're going to be paying Probably 80, yeah, 80 to 100. Yeah. Yeah. So that means hostels and, you know, hostels would probably be five, 10 bucks. I bet they would, they might pay you to stay at one. Um, <laughs> the, the other thing is, like, the other thing is, they, so this was uh, yet again the uh, verbiage adjustment for me. I kept hearing the term hostel and I was like, interesting in the context it was used they use that term for like uh boarding schools here oh wow okay but they do have the equivalent um i don't think i think men have to be separate from women and there are there are a lot of things like that in it mm -hmm. like even if you're going to get your hair cut you better make sure it's unisex first uh, okay because some are only for men some are only for women i see um and that's just kind of for safety yeah. Yeah. We're going to go into entertainment. So entertainment can be anything that you and your wife do to get out, have fun, movies, theater, dance, or just hiking. What do you do for entertainment in India? And then if you have to put a price on it per month, what would that be based on your experience? So movies, um, Three dollars sixty cents per ticket. You would have to go back in time to get that price back at home. Exactly. Um, 
going out to eat is always a good one. Um, we like to go and dance every now and then when we get the opportunity to. Um, but it's not always easy, obviously. So being that we have pretty flexible schedules, when we go out to eat, we do take our son sometimes. Um, and then sometimes we just try to have it be us and we go out for lunch. You can range from 50 to $100 per month. And that would be enough for you to be doing whatever you felt like, including drinking. Wow. And that's drinking out, not, yeah. not just picking up from the store and drinking in. Although I, sure. the universal truth is it's always cheaper to drink at home. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But when yeah. the autos are so cheap here, it's like, why not? <laughs> sure. What do, what do, what do, what do you guys do? What do, what do people in India and in Bangalore typically do? What is like a, a weekend kind of thing that people do there? Are there any specific things that people do for entertainment or? I think it really depends on uh, how much family the person has in the area because the family meals, whenever is kind of a thing. Um, and that's at someone's house, I think more mm -hmm. often than not. It seems like most people uh, like to do the activities like bowling, which okay. we do. Um, you know, we have pseudo Dave and Buster type places here where you can do the bumper cars, you can do the bowling, the arcade games, air hockey. Uh, and again, they're still more affordable than back at home. Mm -hmm. And those are always fun. You can't go wrong with that stuff. Um, go karting. Uh, did that. I don't think I ever did that back at home, but I've done it here. Uh, cool. Those are some of the main things. And then, yeah, clubbing is still, I mean, that's kind of anywhere, but it is cheaper to do here. Okay. How about and, like outdoor activities that people yes, do in India? People are into trekking or I don't know. I feel like that's the adopted term. It was always hiking to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's definitely really popular. Uh, they love their badminton. Uh, yeah. They have a local group, cricket. Nice. Uh, but those are the two main sports, really. You don't see rugby you don't see pretty much anything else but badminton and uh oh and there's swimming some swimming it's surprising for as hot as it is here that it's not more popular mm -hmm. to me it's surprising mm -hmm. but i just feel like the weather in india is hot hotter hottest yeah yeah and then it reverts back <laughs> sure so i'm pretty much always sweaty and hot here it's, yeah yeah it's are you close hard. to the you close to a beach or the ocean? So uh, there are a few options. Goa is a popular spot. And again, ton of ashrams there. Goa, G-O-A? Actually, go yes, G-O-A. And uh, that has, well, churches and temple. I mean, that has a lot of that stuff to visit. Um, the beach is very nice there. I actually like, it reminded me of a miniature Miami, only less trashy. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So much more tolerable. Um, yeah, yeah. Cool. But the beach, I loved uh, the beach there. And then we went to uh, a place recently called Pondicherry. And again, that's a very popular place for ashram meditation. And everything. What is it called? Pondicherry. Pani? P-A-N-I? P-O-N-D-I. P O N D I. And then cherry. cherry. C H E R R Y. I think it does come up that way. Google will make yeah. that way work. Pondy yeah. Cherry. I'll look that up. I've actually I've actually seen a couple different spellings for the same place. So Yeah. Okay. Uh, but again, it, the important thing to also know is when you're doing the traveling, make sure you know what season it is in the area you're going. So when mm -hmm. we went uh, to Pondicherry, it was 
miserably hot. Um, and it does make it difficult, like to go out and see the things. Sure. Um, because it, it, I mean, again, my wife is Indian from here, and even for her, it was hot, which made me feel better. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, is it just me? <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah. Is it humid hot? The humidity is high. It depends. It depends on where. So there, it was terribly humid and hot. Okay. Uh, you do have your places like Ahmedabad, um, and that is a dry state, so you will not find alcohol there. Mm-hmm. Um, that one is dry heat, but it also gets into like the hundred tens and whatnot uh, during what they call their summer. That's called what? Ahmedabad. Ahmedabad. Yeah. Okay. I'm the bot. Okay. And it's right. the new Statue of Unity. It's close to that. Okay. All right. And so that's pretty much all the questions that I have, Chris. Is there any other costs or anything that you think would be valuable to the viewers um, that we haven't covered? Anything? Um you mentioned something, I think, about bartering. Yeah, I did. Um, so bartering used to be very popular here. Um, and again, I think because everyone's feeling the pain in prices, you're not going to really have that anymore, which can be good and it can be bad. So when you order online, they can't change the price. Mm-hmm. Now, if you go to a, a local vendor or fruit market or whatever, and if they don't have a fixed price and they see this color face, they're going to try and charge you more. And they sure. will charge you more. And unless you know the difference, you're not going to know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has happened to me. So I'm saying firsthand, like it can and it will. Um, mm-hmm. But that's another good reason why we have all of these apps like, you don't have to do that. You don't have to walk to a place. You can order everything online. Um, there are so many different languages here. Uh, a decent amount of people do know English, especially in the more populated areas. Mm-hmm. But you still can easily have the language barrier issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, since my wife's Indian, it's easier. Mm-hmm. But even with her, sometimes they're speaking a local language rather to Hindi. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, even even for people who speak Hindi and English, they might not be able to communicate with someone like where we are right now. Mm-hmm. They speak uh, Canada. Canada. So that's their local language. And sometimes you can't find someone who can speak Hindi or English. It's called Canada. Yeah, basically like, the, like Canada with a K. The, wow. <laughs> That's so cool, though. I'd love that, man. Canada. Yeah, they, they've got over 40 languages or something here. Wow. It's, it's, it that would be so... like every one of our states had their own language, not dialect or twang, but their own language. Yeah. It would be like that. Yeah, wow. Very cool. The... um. What do you guys know about ashrams and uh, your experience with that? Well, uh, don't wear leather. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that's one of the literally one of the first things I learned because I, he was like, take your belt off. And I was like, well, my pants are going to sag now because I don't wear it for looks. I wear it for utility. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't wear leather. It's always smarter to bring cheaper footwear just in case. It's not yeah. like you're guaranteed. You, it's one of those things that happens. It does happen. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if it happens that often. I didn't have that problem. Um, but you go, uh, you meditate. The people uh, are there. They give you the free food because they want you to eat. They want you to experience everything fully. Um, I'm probably not even the best at explaining it. They do ashes. Um, The other thing is a lot of these places have 
like a guru that they're famous for. Yes. And people go to these places because of that person. Mm -hmm. So right. you're going because of their words and their teachings and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, the things they give out. So like the ashes, my wife's mom, we went to one and she was like, please give me the ashes. Please give me the ashes. Because mm -hmm. it, it's favorite. So, mm -hmm. uh, but it's very peaceful. And you can stay in those places for they don't charge to visit or stay in them, correct? Not all of them. Not all of them. I was going to okay. say because I, I know it can vary, but not all of them. And but it depends on different reasons why sometimes also mm -hmm. as to why you're there. It depends on how popular it is. Like in oh, that's theory, true. You have to have a month before book, advanced booking and then you can be there for 10, 20 days. So the popularity is another mm -hmm. thing. Gotcha. So if you book in advance, you can be there 10 to 20 days for free. Mm -hmm. uh, the one, one of the few we went to, Oregon. yeah, we, we just walked right in. Everyone's super peaceful. Boys on the right, girls on the left, because again, they they keep things separate like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just peaceful. You don't mm. feel worried when you go to these places by any means. Yeah, yeah. Just you just go in and enjoy it, take it in. And even just people watching, watching the other people take it in and enjoy it. I feel like that's honestly a large part of it. It was for me. Mm-hmm. The and all the food is vegan that they serve at those, right? Yes. Yeah. All vegan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. It, so hence why no leather. Like, yes. Like, yeah. That's they they won't chastise you if you as long as you take it off before you enter. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, does your wife want to come on and say hello? For really? <laughs> She was like, I wasn't ready for this, but yes, she will. <laughs> you know how it is. Hey. Hello. How are you? Oh, I'm yeah. good. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for, for all the additions that you added. We appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. I would yeah. literally be lost here without her. <laughs> yeah, no, man. I think you're you're living the dream. Like you said, Chris, you're you're a unique guy living living in, I think. India is a very special place to live. And quite honestly, I, I don't know why you guys are thinking about coming back to the U.S. It's just... It... <laughs> we can regret it later. <laughs> well, the, the, the great thing is, is that you have access, right? So you have access to the U.S. You could always go back to India anytime yeah. you want. And that's the yeah. beautiful thing about, you know, your marriage and that, that union, yeah. you know, where you guys both have access to both. But yeah, I'm... It's a, it's a, it's an interesting time in the United States, for sure. And it's only going to get more interesting. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, do you guys have anything else that um, you could think of, or we we covered? I think it covered it all. What I would say, the good thing about India is it has basically all kind of terrains. So you have Kashmir, you have the flowery, good landscapes on the east. Mm -hmm. And then you have the southern India with coffee plantations and everything. Mm -hmm. And we are very nicely connected to rail, airlines, and people take road trips over the weekend, which is way cheaper. Mm -hmm. You rent a car, and then you're and that Yeah, that was one thing I didn't mention. Um, it's very easy to rent a car. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rent it for the day, and it's 25. Yeah, 25 for a day. Yeah. Oh, wow. And okay. That's really so super cheap, too. <laughs> Car yeah rent. so you see and then that's the other thing yeah you can get the car for the day and literally do what you want so you don't even really need to buy a car if you can rent Absolutely them that cheap not. i would i would avoid it basically most people do scooters or motorcycles do you guys you have a scooter no no okay what was that my wife won't let me get one and i don't know how to ride one <laughs> yeah. she doesn't know how and she doesn't know yeah. Well, it's probably smart, you know. I mean, it's like uh in a, in a lot of the uh the Asian countries, the, the tuk-tuks and the mo and the scooters, I mean, it's pretty pretty chaotic places like Manila yeah, and Bangkok and you know, you get into the big cities, it's dangerous. It's really dangerous. And you don't have to worry about you on the bike. You always have to worry about that other person that's not paying attention that's going to hit you. 
you know. But I do think that's why they all pay more attention here. I've seen fewer accidents here than I've seen possibly my entire life back at home. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Well, thanks again, you two. I appreciate it for doing this. No problem. All right, man. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll be in touch. You guys take care. Sounds good. Thanks again. Okay. Yep. Bye.